Welcome everybody to a special edition of WCW 2003. Well, I guess it's WCW 2004 now, as it's time for our year in review. Uh, we're basically, it's time to go over basically everything in the in the wrestling world, including um, newcomers, new wrestlers, my my company WCW, other companies, the world in general, and just to basically set things up for the next year in uh, WCW 2003. Uh, as we move on to W 2004, so let's go over first the year in awards, as wacky as they always are. First wrestler of the year was The Undertaker, and I mean, if we you look at his match history, like, he had a whole bunch of, like, great matches, like, random hundreds out of nowhere, of course, that's also what the AI can do, um, but yeah, he surprisingly only didn't have a title match all this year, but, like, if we look at it, like, his big matches for the year, okay, so if we go back all the way to, um, Royal Rumble, he was in the Royal Rumble, at No Way Out, he defeated Matt Hardy in 84, at Mady, he defeated Edge in 85, at Backlash, he defeated Shane McMahon in a 90. Um, at Judgment Day, he defeated uh, Big Show. He lost Big Show in Triple H, teaming up with Eddie Guerrero in a 99. Um, at King of the Ring, he lost to the Big Show in a King of the Ring semifinals in a 99. He came back for, let's see here, Vengeance uh, to team up with Chris Jericho, take on the, AP, the APA and Disturbia in a three way, which got a 98. At SummerSlam, he. Uh, Lost to Chris Jericho along with Raven in a 79. Hey, you can tell the match, the shows that I had to book because the ones that the guy could book. And on Forgiving, I had a random four way 99 with Austin, Triple H, and Shane McMahon. At No Mercy, he defeated Billy Gunn in the first Blood Bank, but still got a 98. Jesus. Um, okay. Um, at Survivor Series, he defeated Raven in the Tables match, which got a 98. And at Armageddon, he lost to Kurt Angle in a 99. And then, of course, he's had a random 100, including Gitto. Um, so yeah, good, good, good year for the Undertaker. Uh, company year was WWE, because of course it was. Team of the year was Kane, Kane and Taker, because again, lots of random hundreds. Match of the year was Steve Austin defeating Rikishi at a random smack on down January. Um, this was a hundred, and I'll go over that when I'm actually, uh, check out the WWE, uh, or WWF, I guess. Um, but yeah, basically, this was just the first hundred of the year, and they had multiple hundreds, so there you go. Uh, show of the year was Armageddon, which I'll go over when I go over WWF's year. Young Rush of the Year was Randy Orton, and of course, he did have a good year. Um, like, he's part of a random 100 worth versus Kurt Angle. If you look at his trial history, he uh, had fought Chris Benoit and Matt Hardy in IC and Euro title matches. But again, if we look at his uh, pay-per-view title history. So if we go all the way back to the Rumble, he was part of the Royal Rumble. At No Way Out, he was on the pre-show to finish Crash Holly in the 72. At Mania, he was part of the pre-show Battle Royal. Um, but then it pushed the inside to kick up as at uh back well, okay, to feed the crasher. Um so at Judgment Day, he was still part of the pre-show. At King of the Ring, though, he was on the main show to feed Haku in a 71. Uh, then at Vengeance, he was uh teaming up with Big Boss Man and I believe, yeah, uh Jake Roberts. No, he was teaming up with uh Viscera and Yeah, okay. In a, wa in a random match. At uh SummerSlam, he defeated X Pac in a 70. He's part of a 93 versus Kurt Angle, then a random 99 and his little mini feud he had with Orton. Uh, then he lost, he defeated Benoit by DQ at an IC title match, which got an 84. Uh, yeah, here you can see is like his random match with Orton really pushing him up. Uh, let's see here. At, he wasn't on Survivor Series, which is interesting. Uh, then at Armageddon, he defeated Matt Hardy by count in a match for the European title. So he, he's really rising up. Uh, Veterans of the Year was Scott Hall, and yeah, did. Scott Hall's had a solid year. Uh, let's see here. Title match wise, yeah, he was, uh, defeating Scott Hall at Judge, he lost his current angle for the world title at Judgment Day, and of course he was part of the Battle Royal, but then if you look at his, uh, sort of pay per view history, so, you know, not much. He was part of the Royal Rumble, and no way out. He teamed with Big Show to lose Triple H and The Rock in a 94. He lost to Kane in an 81 at WrestleMania. He, at Backlash, he lost to Austin in a three way with Chris Jericho. At Judgment Day, like I said, he had that world title match. Uh, at King of the Ring, he defeated Billy Gunn. He's part of a random 100 versus Steve Austin. At SummerSlam, he's part of the big Scott Hall and Shawn Michaels versus Triple H and Kevin Nash match. At No Mercy, he def uh, teamed with Bump and Grind, defeat Shane McMahon and Quick and Sexy. He's part of a 99 versus Triple H in November. At Survivor Series, he's part of a 99 versus Kurt Angle. And yeah, and I'm again, he was part of an 81 when he defeated Big Big Boss Man. So yeah, fun stuff. Uh, Female show of the year was Trish. And yeah, uh, Trish. Of course, spent most of the big portion of the year um, as the women's champion. As you can see here, uh, she lost a, a women's title match at, battle, at uh, 
Royal Rumble. Then she defeated Lita Molly Holly for the title at No Way Out. Uh, defeated Lita at WrestleMania. Lita won the title back at Judgment Day. Uh, then Lita defeated her at King of the Ring. Then Trish won the title back from Lita at Vengeance. And then, it, then the title wasn't uh, defended again until No Mercy because WDF until uh, Four Way. Well, she and Molly Holly lead Ivory, and then she randomly lost the title versus Terry uh, versus Jackie Gata in a match at Survivor Series. So, yeah. And if we look at her other uh, pay per view matches, so if we go back again, go back. So, yeah, we, we went over Media. Uh, let's see here. At King of the Ring. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's. Yeah, Vengeance was a, no, that was, SummerSlam was a random match uh, where she and Jackie Yeda teamed up to keep, keep, uh, defeat Jillian Hall. Then she basically just didn't wrestle, like she wrestled three times between SummerSlam and Survivor Series. Okay. And then she had her la best match. She had a friggin' 90 versus Molly Holly at Armageddon. So there you go. Uh, most improved company there is HWA, so that's good for them. Uh, we just look at their, let's see, we look at their size. Our progress, yeah. So over the year, they increased by fourteen in their home area and basically seven points, six seven points everywhere else. So not bad. Uh, independent wrestler of the year is Shibata, who uh, wrestles for uh, both Michigoku Pro and DDT. And yeah, he's had lots of good matches. Uh, yeah. In fact, we I keep forgetting you can just go to this for top twenty five. And yeah, so he had a 86 versus Ogawa. He had a little mini feud versus uh, Fukuchi, which was in the 80s for DDT. Uh, yeah, so yeah, lots of good matches. And he's actually getting somewhat popular in Japan, even though he's not pop He's not a part of New Japan. Manager of the year was Jordan Muller. Announcer of the year was uh, Masahiro Hagawa, who is a announcer for ATPW. I'm guessing this is an older picture of him because he does not look 35 in that picture. And color commentator of the year is Jerry Lawler, even though he didn't work as a com color commentator all year. And worst of the year was our own Nick Patrick. All right. Um, then let's see here. What other news was here for the, end of the year? Oh yeah, this is interesting. Uh, David Morgan, who was randomly became Booker of All Japan, being, despite the fact he was like a random English guy, is now no longer Booker. So that's interesting. Uh, Jagger Yukota had a baby, yay for them. Uh, but yeah, let's look over some other stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, first, uh, Power 500, five, Power 500. So let's just look at WCW. I'll look, I'll do an overall, like, look over, well, yeah, first look through an overall top 25. So 25 was Flair, 24 was Dr. Wagner Jr., uh, 23 was RVD, 22 was Jeff Hardy, 21 was UEP, who was up 103, mostly because he was in random Langies and on Bra. 20 was Kenta. Uh, 19 was Stevie Richards. Again, he was got to be in random 99 matches, which is interesting. 18 was Randy Orton. Uh, 17 was Eddie. 16 was William Regal. 15 was Christian. 14 was Raven. Thir which, you know, 13 is Benoit. 12 is Kane. 11 is Triple H. 10 is The Big Show. 9 is Billy Gunn, because he gets to be part of a uh, Brain of big matches, and eight is Scott Hall, seven is Jericho, six is Angle, five is Austin, four is Brock Lesnar, three is Sean, two is Edge, one is Undertaker. Uh, if we just narrow this down to WCW. So, uh, we got Eddie at 17, 22 is Jeff Hardy, 23 at RVD, 25 is Flair, 26 is Vamp, 27 is Ray Jr., 28 is 31 is Booker, 33 is Canyon, 34 is Morningstar, 38 is Palumbo, 44 is Goldberg, 46 is Macias, 49 is Douglas, 50 is Sean O'Hare, 52 is Jarrett, 61 is Helms, 63 is Lestat, man, because he's using random great six mans, 66 is 65 is Alex, Alex Wright, 71 is AJ Styles, 77 is Jason Jett, 79 is Air Paris, 80 is Steiner, 83 is Kidman, 107 is uh, La Parca, mainly for his uh, Mexican, Mexican work, 121 is Mike Awesome, 125 is Sting, again, even though he didn't really wrestle all year, 131 is Lance Storm, I, I think he just barely hit the 10 match minimum, 132 is Paul London, 135 is Jack Evans, 159 is James Storm, 171 is Chavo, 177 is Teddy Hart, 184 is Chris Harris, 196 is Kid Cash, 199 is Kaz, uh, 215 is Gigantes, 224 is Reno, 251 is Jindrak, 252 is Shijiri, 256 is Dustin Rose, 270 is Jamie Noble, uh, 305 is Conan, 319 is Sean Stasiak, 338 is Bliss Freak, 343 is Jimmy Yang, 406 is Bonnie Brown, um, again, main, main for his, w, for his, uh, uh, week, for his, uh, wild side work, uh, 416 is Angel Fox, 437 is Lexi James, 
442 is Gail Kim. 454 is Fit Finley. So there you go. Solid stuff. And that brings us to the actual um, looking at WCW. So again, if we look at our, again, I'll basically going through everything, but starting from the top, creative. Number one is Goldberg. Number two is RVD. Number three is Eddie Guerrero. Four is Ray Jr. Number five is Kanan. Only guy I'm kind of surprised at is Ray Jr. Everybody else makes sense. I think, again, Eddie's not getting over, but he's still part of my, like, top five in creative. So there's that. Uh, next big things is, of course, Angel Fox, Jeff Hardy, Jordan Cole, Paul London, AJ Styles. All makes sense. Surprising London is above Styles, but that's something that could be changed in a while. Hot Prospects is, of course, Angel Fox, Teddy Hart, Jordan Cole, Paul London, and Lash. Again, Lash is somebody who I probably should use more, but, like, I... Yeah, I just never saw it to him. Uh, talk to Talk is, of course, Canyon, Flair, Booker, Joni Lawler, Jeff Jarrett. So, again, if you if you ever wondered why um, my Horseman segments can only got, like, 90s, there you go. Showstoppers in the ring is, of course, Ray Jr., RVD, Jeff Hardy, Eddie Guerrero, AJ Styles, who you'd imagine. Uh, ring Generals is Ray Jr., Eddie Guerrero, Lance Storm, Morningstar, Chavo Guerrero Jr. And Chavo is really good and probably somebody who I should push more in a year, especially with Eddie. So, you know, uh, who knows for the future. Uh, who's Hot, Goldberg, Vampiro, Morningstar, RVD, Booker T. Who's not as Joey Miller and Jason Jett. But I'm quite surprised because I gave them a decent push on Sarpe, but what can you do? And Hidden Gems is exactly who you expect at this point. Fun stuff. Uh, let's see here. Figurehead is still Paul Goldberg. And again, he's attendance is up 8% and we're selling 35% merch. So yeah. Again, our product is still um, classic sports entertainment. No reason to change that. Stables. Again, stables. We got the Deadpool. Which is Vampiro, Morningstar, Lestat, and Macias. Four Horsemen, which is Canyon, Flair, Jarrett, Douglas, and Joni. Helms and Co., Helms Legacy. Uh, I really should change these guys, the pitchers, to actually add them. Uh, Roman Legion is Jonathan Toro, Elizabeth Canales, Romeo Lavernias, Pompeius, and Thrive Front, which is Kidman, Storm, Mike Awesome, and April Hunter as this, you know, as a support. Uh, teams, uh, colors for teams, we got three count, who still exist. Uh, Air Raid, who of course have been already four time tag team champions. Uh, America Swan, who have also already been two, ta two time tag team champions. Uh, Skipper and Romeo, who really aren't, um, a team anymore, so let's just save that. Uh, Filthy Animals, who also are no longer a team, so we'll get rid of that. Art Legacy, who have been already tag team champions. Junior Dragon Sajiak, who have been, uh, tag team champions back in 2002. Uh, Young Dragons, who also should be inactive as a unit. Rose Coros, who are here. Uh, Plumbo and O'Hara, who of course, you know, um, you know, they're both baby faces that so look at the team. The Roman Legionnaires of Romeo and Swinger, Silver City Rollers of Cash and Reno, and Team Canada, which, yeah, we'll change it in individuals. But who have been still two time tag champs? Again, titles, World TV titles, Jonathan Toro, he's held it, uh, basically since October. World Tag Team titles, who have had a weird, you know, interesting year as Air Raid started with the titles. They held them until May. AMW won them in May, who held them until August. Uh, eight, you know, Air Raid won them back in August, who lost them back at Havoc to, uh, to Heart Legacy. Heart Legacy won, lost them back to AMW, who then lost them back to Air Raid, who of course won them back at the Assault on Anarchy match this year. Uh, Women's World Champion has also been interesting, as again, the year started with, uh, Beth Phoenix winning the title. Of course, Angel Fox debuted, well, yeah, won the titles on the first night of the year. Held until April, who lost titles to Lexi James. Lexi's lost, lost the title back to Angel Fox in July, who lost the title to September. Who Gail came in the title in September, who lost to Starcade, we're seeing Cartier. You start to see why I gave Cartier the one at Starcade, because this would quickly became, this would quickly become a Charlotte-ish problem, even though I actually think the whole Charlotte thing is overrated, over, problem is overstated. But again, she would be kind of a problem if, like, the, she was the only baby face pulling stuff. Uh, Cruiserweight Champion, again, you're started with, uh, let's see here. Yeah, you're started with Morningstar's Champion. He held the title till March. Uh, Apollo won the title in March, well, it's July, and Noble has been the champion since July. So probably like the longest title reign in a little while. Probably, hell, probably since like, I, I don't even know. Like, I, I would probably have to like go back and actually check the, the title histories on, on the internet to see it. See it. Uh, US Heavyweight Champion, again, you're started with, uh, with Ray Jr. winning the, winning the title at Starcade. He held the title until April. Home won the title in April, held it to July. Of course, he, he lost to the Hardys on the Hardys debut. Then at that pay-per-view, Home won, won it back, held the title until October, and then Ray Jr. won it back at Halloween Havoc, and he's still the champion. And then the big one, World Heavyweight Champion, of course. Uh, Goldberg started the year as champion, held it till May. Vampire held it from Vampire October, and now Eddie's champion. 
Uh, so again, looking at our broadcasting deals. Actually, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Let's see here. On top 100, just for the for for, for interesting. So top events. Uh, this random nitro in June, which uh, which I could actually, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, some random natures in June. Our best PvP was actually great on combat, which got a 90. Uh, again, top match was a six man in Nitro and August, which got a 97. Our best big match was Eddie versus Flair, which got a 94 at Mayhem. Helm versus Ray, which got a 94 at Sacrifice. Kane RVD, which got a Havoc, which got a 93. And Vampire, the three way at Star K, which got a 93. And Array versus Jordan Douglas, which, which got a 92. So stuff like that. Uh, best attendances. So 21,000 for both Russell and Brush at the Bash of the Beach. That's more like a how many people can you fit in than a best match thing. Uh, best buy rate it was Mayhem, which got a 1.69. I think that's more because of a change in who was actually doing the, uh, how I was actually showing the shows. Any big change. Uh, yeah. Best CV rating is, as you can see. And again. Best viewerships. Starcade is actually our best viewerships because again, it moved. I think, yeah, Starcade moved to a, a TP basically. Uh, so let's see here. Backstage. Backstage is good. Like there are issues, but like nothing too terrible. If we look, look at our size, so if we check our progress in the US, we've, you know, basically gained a few points almost everywhere. Uh, we're up to an 82 in the Mid-South, which is kind of insane. But yeah, we're, we're, we're gaining basically everywhere. In Canada, now that we actually have a good DVT, we're quickly rising up to the... Like, basically, we're probably going to be, like, caught up in the U.S. by the end of next year. Uh, Mexico is still steady. We're in the 80s, which is where we're having the pay-per-view there in January. Uh, British Isles, again, we're up to 67, up to mid-80s there as well. Uh, Japan, we're up to mid-80s there as well, from 76. Europe is interesting because we're up to 84 in Western Europe and just a wild mess of stuff depending on what we have coverage at. Aside from that, Oceania is also we're also more popular. Honestly, like we should be doing shows in like Australia, Japan, and London, not in the US in, in a certain amount. But we're getting there. Uh, medical wise, yeah. So nothing too huge. Uh, Joni Lawler is in rehab. Sting is in rehab. Everybody else has some like minor injuries. Uh, promises, she knows his offer for Grover Jeff Hardy, so that's cool. A uh, production, uh, again, we're only behind the WE, and that makes sense. Like, you know, I'm not going to spend the money right now for to put her over WE. Uh, we have the power plant, so there you go. Uh, merch wise, again, last year, so go, going from the top, bottom. Jason Jett, Bobby Heaton, Jerry Lawler, Lance Storm, Dusty Rhodes, Reno, Cagantes, Chris Harris, Jamie Noble, Mark Jindrak, Sean Stasiak, Lance James Storm, Roddy Piper, who's me, Lestat, Eric Paris, Jack Evans, Paul London, Stacey Keebler, I'm sure that's all posters, Mike Awesome. Uh, see, notice that like you get a big jump here as it goes from 3,000, 7,000 for Mike Awesome, then it's up to 10,000 uh, for Morningstar, Helms, Bischoff, which I guess is... I don't know, probably like off our video games. Douglas is another slight jump, then AJ Styles, then another big jump for Kidman, another jump to right. Then we get into the real big boys as we got Vampiro at 16, Waller at 15, which is probably horseman stuff with some posters as well. Jeff Jarrett, Sting at 55, uh, Flair at 56, Jeff Hardy at 62, another big jump to Ray Jr. at 96, CS at 102, Kane at 121, Eddie at 138, Scott Snyder at 151. Palumbo at 160, which is kind of interesting that Palumbo is this high. Booker is at 227, which is another jump. O'Hara to 326 is another jump. RVD to 4, at 440 is another jump. And then Bill Goldberg, of course, at 1.5 million. Jesus Christ. Um, so that goes back to my financing. Yeah. Financing, uh, basically, uh, main reason is like, yeah, we spent a bunch on. Why did we not make that much money last month? I'm sure it's something obvious. Oh, right, because we did a bunch of extra stuff for Starcade, right? Because, yeah, we had the Jack Black and everything show up from Paper Eater, right? Okay. But, yeah, still we're up from $25 million to $58 million, So, yeah, there is no, no money problems at all. Uh, which, oh, yeah. Owner goals. Again, financial balance what he said. Must, no, yeah, that's not going to be a problem. Candy must be kept popular, which, um, 
yeah, this is something I'll have to work with because somebody want like one of the yeah, this will uh, be interesting to work with because of reasons. I can't hire any brawlers and I can't hire any technician flyers. So there you go. Which is one reason why I haven't like able to um, bring in a bunch of like Japanese people for the cruiser or Mexican guys for the cruiser division because all like the good cruiser weights have suddenly become technician flyers, which is interesting. Uh, let's see here. I'll come back to developmental when I'm going over the roster. Again, events and TVs. Uh, I'm going to change this, uh, basically, this whole, uh, calendar around. Because uh, January is going to be a showdown in the sun. I'll probably move Russell Ward to March. And then everything else will probably be the same. But I might change out Clash of the Champions for another event. It just depends on what I decide to do. So then, of course, we have some shows that could come back eventually if I want, and a new show which may come back eventually. Right now it's just Nitro and Saturday night. And to go over our broadcasting, so again, uh, some of these are new deals, some of these are old deals, uh, but yeah. So we have Cable Vision at a medium, uh, which we probably want to expand eventually. Uh, Sportsnet at very small in Canada. Uh, MVS Multivision at a medium in Mexico, which is a new one. Uh, NHK, which is still enormous, which we still have 11 episodes remaining uh, for Japan. Uh, 10 Network in Australia, which is big, which we have 11 months left. Sky One, which is going to be how we rebuild our uh, popularity in, uh, in, in Europe, basically. And then for our TV shows, uh, let's see here. The big one is, yes, WCW Nitro is back on TBS. Um, well, never was, but in reality, uh, I was going to go to TNT once this became available, but T TBS is actually a bigger network. Not in real life, but, you know, whatever. And also, yeah. And, and again, a uh, new show for, new new network for uh, Nitro in Mexico is removed to Gala TV. Sky One, again, for all our TV shows uh, in UK and Europe. Fuji TV for Nitro, as basically um, NHK wanted way too high um, quality for the keeps going on there. So, you know, moved it down to Fuji TV. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. And again, if we look at our coverage, uh, all types, that's all shows. So yeah, for television, yeah, we basically got everything covered except for New Zealand and India and events. Again, same thing everywhere, but a New Zealand, New Zealand and India. Um, announcers, I'll go over because there's going to be some slight changes to that. Uh, roster, storyline, teams, titles, um, ticket, ticket prices is nothing that really matters. Um, talent trades, relationships, yeah, okay. Anyway, so let's go over the roster. We're going to go over the roster basically by perception. Um, just, you know, why not? Uh, just to go over things. So, okay, so we start with, so we start with the Goldberg. Uh, again, Goldberg's in the interesting position as he is the guy. But honestly, like this past year, he wasn't involved in basically a world title feud after he dropped the titles. He was not available not long feud with Macias. And also, he's probably going to be part of the world title feud anytime soon, but he's still insanely over and sort of like our guy. And yeah, so yeah, we've got title matches. Basically, after he lost the title to Vampire, he wasn't involved. And he really didn't wrestle on TV much after uh, Clash of Champions. Like, he went from Clash to the Brawl not wrestling once. And yeah. And then if we look at his popularity, as we track that, yeah, he's basically about the same everywhere, but he rose, rose, rose up a little bit. And um, yeah, but yeah, but again, as far as like, he's like, you know, even though he's still really over, he's still, you know, actually like, he's still not bad in the ring at all. Like, you know, obviously. You know, he's not going to have, like, 30-minute classes at any time soon, but he's still Bill Goldberg, so he's still, like, quite good. Um, but yeah, like, so, like, for the next year or so, probably, again, he'll have a really good run. Um, he probably won't be, like, again, at least for the first, for the first few months, unless something weird happens, he's probably not going to be tired of the world title pitchers, but he will have several big feuds. That's, and I'll, that's what I'm always going to say about that. Uh, next up is Kidman. Uh, Kidman had a strong year. Um, maybe not, maybe not quite as strong as his year, um, um, last year after he turned heel and had the, that U.S. title run and that big cake match with Ray Jr. I'd actually double check, but if we look at his popularity, like his popularity did increase, like from mid-60s all the way up to 83, so at least that got over. 
And if we look at his skills, like, like, you know, he's never going to be the best talker, but he's like, he, what really helps him is he has an absolutely insanely good gimmick. And yeah, he's just been strongly pushed. And, but yeah, if we look at like his history, uh, and then if we look, look at pay-per-views. So again, if we go back to, uh, Wrestle War, he defeated RVD. He uh, teamed up with a vampire to take on Booker and RVD. Then he lost the basically the uh, feud versus RVD. He was involved in the three way versus uh, with Helms and DDP over the US title. Then he uh, then basically that feud continued with DDP as he defeated DDP basically in his go away match. Uh, Palumbo beat him in, at, at uh, Bash at the Beach. He uh, had a match at Fall Brawl where he got defeated Sean O'Hare. He uh, Basically, was part of the form. Then he, there was the formation of the uh, triumvirate at Halloween Havoc. He had a strong uh, Mayhem tournament going all the way to the finals, and then at Starcade, of course, he teamed with Lance Storm and won the tag team comp. So that's sort of like the inner sling spot I put him in is in a strong tag team with Lance Storm as part of the triumvirate, mainly because, to be perfectly honest, like. I didn't want to give him another U.S. title feud, and he's really, like, he's not quite, like, he's not main event ready yet. Like, he's really, like, banging on the door, and, like, I, I can see him maybe in, in 2005 or even 2006, like, actually getting a strong, like, world title feud if there's a babyface champion, but not right now. Um, so, you know, sort of put them, you know, get, get them a team with Lance, they can have really good matches in, like, the upper mid card, and there you go. Then we have Booker T. Uh, a strange year for Booker as, like, if you, if you look at his actual popularity, like, he actually dropped a bit, but not, like, as much as you think, and he actually gained a lot, but he just dropped down a little up to the end of the year. Because, basically, he dropped a lot. Like, I don't want to say, like, he, you know, and he's still, like, really good. Like, we, he's, like, 85 charisma, 89 microphone, was still decent in the ring. Um, you know, he, he'll, he's, he's going to be a solid top guy for the next couple of years. And again, if, if you look at his, like, actual, like, history like he had a 500 record which is kind of insane like his wrestle war candy defeated super brawl he went to a no contest team with booker booking with rvd as bringing bash he defeated scott steiner uh at sacrifice of course he lost he lost to goldberg for the world title uh slambury he went to a double count with macias he defeated more by count at bash at the beach he lost to macias at clash of the champions he was part of the team that defeated the deadpool in the war games match at fall brawl he Lost to Morning Star with Hugh at Halloween Havoc. He lost to Vampiro at uh, Mayhem. And then, of course, he lost three-way to Booker T. So, like, yeah. So, that's the thing. Is like, he was, like, a top... Like, he was probably, probably like... He was probably, I want to say, probably the number three babyface. Um, you know, right behind Goldberg and maybe... Um, actually, yeah. He, maybe he was the number two babyface after last year's arcade. And I've sort of, like, used them to get over other people, like, mainly the Deadpool. And now, you know, 2004, all I'm going to say is going to be a very interesting year for him. Because I think if you've been, like, watching the video, like, you can sort of see where it's going. But I have some interesting things to do with him. Other than Chuck Palumbo, who, again, always surprisingly how over he is. Like, um, like, again, like, he started at 63. And then, like, starting in July, like... Especially, uh, like in June, which I'll have to double check, like what match he won in June that got him insanely over like this. But he went from like a standard, like upper mid card guy, like a, a mid card guy to like upper mid card guy. All of a sudden now he's like a top guy. Like I, I saw in the merchandise, he's like a number three. And, and he doesn't even have like a great, like, gimmick. Like I should, I should probably change his gimmick even. Um, but yeah, like actually, let's just look at his match history. Cause like I'm actually kind of confused. So what was, okay. Okay, so, so that's the interesting thing, is he didn't even, like, win a bunch of matches. Like, I mean, again, okay, if we look over his year, okay? He uh, was part of the cage heat match at Wrestle War. He lost to Helms at Super Brawl. He was part of a six-man where he teamed, was, teamed up with uh, O'Hara, DDP, defeat the Horseman at Spring Break Bash. He teamed up with Jet to lose to Jared and Douglas at Sacrifice. At Slamberg, he hit Scott. At Great and Bash, he lost to Helms in a 78. At Bash of the Beach, he defeated Kidman in 81. And then, yeah, all of a sudden, he was just really over. Like, that's sort of insane to me. 
He's part of that great match on that uh, 97 Naturals, which was part of our best show ever uh, so far. Uh, he had the world title match with an 87 Clash of the Champions. He uh, then, you know, he was, uh, he, he had, then he was part, of, he had his fair feud, which he, you know, got 83 and 79. So, I mean, that's a thing. And, like, skills-wise, like, he's okay. I mean, he's not even, like, I've had, he's not, he's, he's mediocre in the ring. Um, psychology is always decent. And he's, like, again, like, he's just, he just has a really good star call. And I guess I want to find him hot. That's interesting. It's like he's, like, he is, like, he, I mean, I guess he can do really good power spots. He can be athletic enough to do the moves, even if it, they're not flashy moves. And, yeah, he, and he, like, I mean, honestly, for, I guess he's just really set for a product. Anyway, and of course he's managed by Stacy. Um, but yeah, and yeah, Palumbo, I mean, at the moment, I have a really big Starcade for Matt, match for him, for set, quasi set for next year, assuming things don't go wrong. Uh, next up, Eddie. Eddie, 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 Eddie. I, <sighs> It's this is very interesting for me because Eddie's been so like again, I'll go over stats and his popularity. It really tells me he has a pop cap. Because again, if you look at his popularity, uh track progress, like he got an eighty five in the WWE, and he like basically has fallen slowly. But if you look at his skills, like there's no reason why this should be true. Because like, you know, really good in the ring, insanely good psych stuff. Really good performance skills, like maybe slightly underrated, only because we're starting from the 2001 base, not like as people like you know basically did his stuff. Um, really good fundamentals, like yeah. So that's just interesting to me. Um, and yeah, if you look at his match history again, uh, so if we go back to basically his first, okay, so he had the four way fall roll with God in '84, had the world title match at Halloween Havoc with God in '81, had the match versus Thor with God in '94, and yeah. The Starcade match got 78. That's beside, of course, despite both guys. Like, yeah. Kenny getting 88, Eddie getting 90. So, yeah. So, yeah. Eddie's, like, again, I have some choices to make with Eddie. And it really, it's going to be come down to if I can actually, like, get him actually over over. Because, like, right now, like, even though he's, like, he's number three in the creative, like, he's not, he, like, he I'm booking like a top guy, and like, in character he feels like a top guy, but like the fiends just aren't responding to him. So it's, it's interesting. Anyway, uh, Bischoff is Bischoff, like, you know, basically he gets to be part of highly rated segments and get really over, and yeah. And, and I, I really enjoy his basically his smarmy ratings, like, asshole character I have built for him. At a certain point, I, I might have to like sort of redo him or take him off TV or do something with him. Uh, I mean, he is the owner of the company, so I can't, so he help, he's going to be around, so I might as well use him, but there's only so much, like, he can't, like, again, I hate that after 20 years of, like, watching, 30 years, I guess, almost at this point, of watching on TV, I guess, 97, Vince, so yeah, 25 years, I guess, we'll, we'll say. So I really hate, like, the heel GM character, but at some point, like, I gotta do something different at the top. Um, anyway, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff, again, Jarrett's another guy who's more over than you think based on how I book him. Um, yeah, like, he's, again, at a certain point, like, at, uh, after September, which I'm guessing was part of War Games, or maybe a really good match, he and, uh, yeah, I mean, he was, like, insanely over in September. I, I'd have to double check. But, like, he just, like, yeah. Again, like, this Jeff Jarrett is actually, like, kind of worthy of his DNA run. Um, again, if you look at his skills, solid top row stuff. Really good psych stuff, good charisma, really good on the mic. Yeah, like, and again, this is stuff he's built just, you know, from being here since 2001. Um, again, if we look at his match history, like, he has, like, he hasn't actually rust a ton, but he's, he's had, like, insane, like, again, if you look at his, uh, yeah, if you look at his top 25 matches, like, he had a match with, uh, against Air Raid, which got a 92. He had a eight man with the rest of the horsemen, which got a ninety two. Had a whole bunch of six mans in the eighties. He's part. He had another match uh, with Shane going versus Sean and RVD, which got an eighty six. So yeah, just insanely good matches. And he even had some like like you know he had 
the two matches versus AJ in September and November, which got an 84 and 86. So yeah. And again, like I actually have a plan, a big plan for the Horsemen for the beginning of the year, which will lead to some changes. And yeah, possibly a big change for Jared. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Canyon. Canyon still insanely over. Um, that's my history, not popularity. But yeah, just like he's lost a little bit only because he, he was a world title guy, but yeah, still. And skills wise, again, like, like, yeah, he's insane. Like, like this is a Chris Canyon who has become a legitimate top guy. Um, and if we look at his match history, he, you know, Wrestle War, he defeated Booker T. He lost his rematch versus Goldberg. And then we had, you know, his feet with DDP, Plumber Wet O'Hare, uh, you know, l- losing to O'Hare, then losing to RVD out of the Ring of Nitro, coming back, feeding Ray Jr. at, uh, Bash at the Beach. Going to time draw versus RVD. Then uh, having that big 4 for all ball. Then defeating RVD at Halloween Havoc. Defeating Palumbo at Mayhem. And then losing Eddie. So there you go. Yeah, just... Um, yeah, so, you know, he'll have an interesting rest 2004. Macias. Just a guy who I've pushed like hell and has gotten really over. I mean, you know, he went from basically, you know, debuting... Back in January, and now he's like a top top guy in the low eighties, high nineties, and like skills wise, you know, like he's decent in the ring. He has okay psych, good charisma. Like he, he doesn't really have that much menace, but he has hella star quality, and yeah, everything else. And yeah, if you look at his match history, you know, I pushed him like you know. Look at his first couple matches in, in, in like, WC, in, in this year. He defeats Luck Luger, defeats Savage, defeats CDP, he defeats Sting on the first two months. By March, he's uh, having a world title match. In June, you know, he defeats Goldberg at, at Bash of the Beach. He defeats Booker T at Clash of the Champions. He, you know, loses he to Goldberg by DQ, and he doesn't do his, his first in-ring, like, you know, one, two, three job until starting. Yeah, so, along with the rest of the pool, I have a, something cleaned up for their whole year, and, you know, hopefully people will enjoy it. Awesome. Awesome's another guy who is, I like, I've sort of, like, not pushed great, but he's just good enough, like, he's gotten over, basically, because of good matches. You know, up from the low 60s to mid 70s. And yeah, he basically, you know, he's part of the triumvirate now. He had his big match uh, versus Sean O'Hare, which he jobbed at. But like, I actually think he has a good 2004 as part of the triumvirate. I actually have an interesting feud for the first start of his year. Uh, Morningstar, who, you know, is one of the guys who I've just, I turned into a star. Like, you know, start of the year, he's 40s. Now he's in the high 70s or 80s, depending on where you're at, you know? And in-ring skills, of course, you know. It's Christopher Daniels. It's, you know, really good in stuff. And it, and it helps that he has a legendary gimmick. So, you know, again, I have a plan for the Deadpool for the rest of the year. Ray Jr., who's not as over as you think he would be. Like, I mean, he's he's over, but he's not, like, super over, which is one reason why he's still U.S. champion and not the main pitcher yet. But again, if you look at his, like, skills, look at that, like... Look at those technical aerial flashings. Look at that psych. Look at that charisma. Look at that star quality. Um, his, his gimmick sucks, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, something I'll, I'll probably have to change when there's a chance to. But yeah, Ray Jr. has a really... I have some plans for him in 2004, is all I'm going to say. Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Um, the basic problem with Flair is he's still really good. Like... Like, you know, he's still really good. <laughs> like, you know, even after, like, I pro- kind of dropped him, like, hell to Palumbo, like, he still basically is over he was at the start of the year. And skills-wise, you know, like, you know, like, you know, he's really dropping as far as flashy. Like, you know, like, a Ric Flair match at this point, like, is, but look at those, that psych. Look at that charisma. Look at those basics. Look at that stamina. Like, you know, look, I mean, I mean, if you watch, like, 
but the thing is, like, you know, you, you look at those stats, and you're like, ee, but then you look at the match history, and you're like, eh, you know? Like, and I have a plan for Flare for Dozen 4, which, honestly, I'm thinking is probably going to be his, like, last, well, I mean, even if, like, you look at his match history, like, it's not like he was doing a ton of matches. Well, actually, he still, he, he still had 40 matches this year, which is more than I thought he did. Um, but yeah, like, I think, like, probably 04 is going to be his last full-time year. Uh, but again, like, you know, as long as he keeps up pumps, pumping out, like, 80s or 90s as far as, like, in-ring, you know, for his ratings, like, what else? Like, why wouldn't I keep putting him in the ring? Uh, RVD? RVD, honestly, like, okay, time for some behind. I think I've admitted before. So, 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 behind the, uh, door here, like, you know, back door, actual booking. If I couldn't have signed Eddie, RVD was winning the title at Starcade. Or RVD was swinging the title at Havoc. Um, but yeah, so there it is. So he kind of got screwed, but I have some plans for him, uh, for the beginning of this year and long term plans for the rest of the year. But it's not like he's, like, not gotten over. Like, he went from mid to low 70s everywhere to, like, mid to high 80s. So he can't complain too much. Steiner. Steiner's another guy who, like, in real life was kind of a shell, but because he hasn't had the injuries he had in real life, he's like still really over. And even again, in ring stuff. Like, this is not the broken down Scott's real life Scott Steiner 2004, who was having terrible matches with Triple H. This is a guy who can have perfectly respectable matches, and you know, and so I can't really like, like you know, once guys are basically not great in the ring anymore, I, I don't feel any compunction about using jobbers, as you've sort of seen with guys, other guys who I'll get to, but, like, Steiner's still good. Like, I mean, and, like, I still have him for another six months, which, honestly, like, yeah, I mean, that might might be sort of, like, how I get rid of these, like, older guys, is be like, okay, bye, have fun on the indies or on secondary feds or getting signed by WWF, because, like, there's nothing, like, and that's the problem, it's like, I... I kind of have a plan for Steiner's end here, but I don't know if that will actually work or not. Um, anyway, off to Sean O'Hare. Like, the guy who I've sort of turned into the guy. Um, but yeah, just a really good guy. Um, again, popularity-wise, I mean, he was already really over at the start of last year, but now he's, like, super over. And then skill-wise, you know, you know, he's slowly getting more over. Psych is up to a decent amount. Uh, Charisma's up a little bit. Like, he'll, like, you know, he's never going to be, like, as you can see, he, it looks like he's signing, kind of hit his cap with star quality. Uh, stamina. Again, looks like he hit his, like, lose, losing his little sim, so he probably hit his cap there. Power of those are going up, so fun stuff like that. Um, you know, again, like, He's not going to be a great in-ring guy, but he can get really good ratings with, with our product. <laughs> and obviously, I've got some plans from 2004. Uh, again, Douglas is a guy like um, Steiner, Flair, who I don't have great plans for, but he keeps on being good in the ring. And is like, because of his team with Jarrett, is still a lot more over than you think. Like, he really got over. Like, you know, like, it, I bet if, you know, I mean, obviously, who's thinking about how over ran people are in my, in, in my save. But I bet if, like, you know, I ask people watching the save, like, what was Douglas's overness at the beginning of December in the save? Not a lot of people would have picked low 80s, you know? Uh, but again, he's still part of the Horseman. I have some plans for the Horseman in 2004, which hopefully will be entertaining. Shane Holmes, my guy, the dude, who I've still been turning into a top guy, whether people actually enjoy it or not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Helms, you know, at his peak, which I think was part of his feud with Sting and Ray, like, he was really over at this point. He lost a little bit, but, like, you know, that's because he's sort of been giving his, his jobs back. Yeah, if you look at his match history, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so he beat, he beat Palumbo, then he defeated Jeff Hardy, yeah. And he had, yeah. But he had, like, back, like, those matches versus Sting and Ray Jr. were, were bangers, and then he had that absolute insane match against, at Stargate. So, yeah, but skills-wise, you know, like, he, he's decently charismatic, he's, he's decent at acting, he's good in ring, you know. So, again, like, um, I mean, honestly, I can probably build him to a, like, I don't know if he'll, like, just because of, like, his, like, like, limits and, you know, he's already 29, so, like, 
I mean, I think, I mean, I think he can be a top heel eventually. I don't know if it's going to be this year, but we'll have to see. Um, Sting, of course, is in rehab for six more months. Um, yeah, he's still quite over still. Like, he'll probably lose a little bit of that when he's in rehab, but like, you know, he's not unover. Again, like, like Flair, he's not terrible in the ring yet. So that's the thing is like, when he comes back is like, okay, what, to, oops, that's the wrong thing. What to do with Sting? Of course, and there's Vampiro, who I know probably some people who watch this don't like because it's Vampiro, but like, you know, he's not insanely over as he was at the end of the Starcade, but he's still like really over, uh, especially after dropping to Eddie twice, or dropping to Eddie and even winning at Starcade. Skills wise, you know, he's never been a great entering guy, but he has that, those mental skills and he has decent charisma and everything else. So next up, we go for major stars, two stars. First off, AJ Styles, the future man. I mean, again, he's still in the tag team division. He's one half the tag team champions, but you can sort of guess that that's not going to be his long term run. Uh, popularity wise, of course, just stupidly. Like, actually, not, I mean, 13 points over here is good, but like, yeah. But skills wise, of course, he's getting like, he's getting stupidly good. And yeah, I mean, obviously, 2004 will be a big year for him, just like it was in real life, only instead of wrestling in front of a dilapidated Nashville foreground, so we'll be wrestling on live TV in front of millions of people. Alex Wright? Uh, Alex Wright, Alex Wright, Alex Wright. Alex Wright is a guy who I basically wasted in 2004. And I don't want to say wasted. Um, cause, like, you know, he had his, like, his little team with Ray, and he had, like, you know, but basically by the end of the year, he was a jobber to the stars. A really good jobber to the stars, an over job to the stars. So I actually want to do something with him this this year. Uh, I just have to figure out the right angle, the right character. Because, like, I don't want to just turn him back heel. But I also don't want to, like, you know, I got to think of a good idea for him. Because he's really good. Like, he's actually quite good. Like, he's quite decent in ring and everything else, you know. So there's something to it. Um... Chris Harris, again, one half the AMW, getting pretty over, decent in the ring, long term. And I'll just quick throw James, you know, high 60s. Um, getting quite, you know, up from the 40s up to the mid 60s, which makes sense. So there we go. Next up, Gigantes, the Wall Brother. Um, yeah. I mean, he's never, go like, you know, basically, as far as big angry guys, Macias like overpassed him, but you know he can be a solid mid card, tough heel, bodyguard type character uh, for the next little bit. Like at the very minimum, he has another like you know I re-signed him for two years, basically at the end of this contract. Um, basically, the idea is like, like maybe after like I'll see where like the Helms stable is at the end of this year and see where we go from there. Uh, then we got Jeff Hardy, who of course, um, I saw, you know, so I signed with him in June. And if you notice, like, he got, like, he was in the mid 60s in a VF, and I super charged him. Like, he, now he's, like, if I book him correctly, he can legitimately be a top guy. Like, you know, he'll never be a great guy, and he's obviously Jeff Hardy, so any day can be a, oh, he's asleep high, you know. But the good news is, you know, he has, he's with Gail Kim now. So hopefully Gail will help him out. Uh, Lestat, Lestat is basically over because he keeps on being in good six mans with the rest of the Deadpool. Like, legitimately, like, uh, I wish there was a way to, uh, to filter out this match, match history. Only, you know, not including pre-show matches. Because I guarantee you, like, if we just include Nitro matches, like, like, let's just look over and see if his actual single matches on Nitro. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah. Jobbing to Goldberg in June. Jobbing to O'Hare in June. Jobbing to Booker T in July. Uh, Jobbing to Palumbo in August. Uh, do, do, do. Jobbing to Sting in November. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. is That's his job, is to be in to be the fall guy in six mans, and then job to the singles guy facing one of the other top morning star guys. And, honestly... Like, he's angry right now because I had him lose the Battle Royal to Chavo, but, you know, what can you do? 
And Roddy Piper is, of course, my player character, which, as a quick note, um, if we look at my user talents, so, again, no skating. I can't, pick, you know, it's Roddy Piper. He wants to give people money. Motivating, decent, creativity. I, again, I, I don't think people get this, is that Piper was actually a, a really good booker for Portland. Uh, then leadership is five, diplomacy is five, so we're is a six, you know, because it's Piper. And user stats, you know, 100 each shows, etc., etc., etc. Fun stuff. Right now, my performance is average because I accidentally uh, broke a rule, but, you know, what can you do? I'll fix that, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway. And part of, like, I'm not using Piper on screen because that's a cheat. Well, I'm not really a cheat, but, like, I, if I'm going to use myself as, as the user character, I want it to be something as part of something big. But anyway, let's move on. Let's go to well-known people. Air Paris. Again, that's the difference. Like, and can, like, if you actually look, like, at his, like, um, wild side stuff, you can find it online. Like, Air Paris was a solid wrestler. Like, he wasn't never, he was never going to be AJ. But, like, you know, I can totally see this happening, like, in an alternate universe. Uh, Bobby Heenan. So, this is a quick thing. So, I don't know if you, like, people don't know the timeline, but by this time in real life, in 2004, Heenan had had his throat cancer, and he was really not doing great anymore. Like, um, if you, like, search out, like, his, like, one appearance he did in TNA during this time period, like, he's still Bobby Heenan, like, in the brain, but he's, the voice is no good. And I don't, like, I, like, I don't like to fantasy book cancer away in cases like this. So, basically, quietly, Starcade was Bobby's last show. Um, I put him as left the business. And, you know, in six months, he'll quietly go home, you know, because I don't, you know, because I, I, I feel weird because I, like, basically, I feel weird that in real life, like a real life company wouldn't be able to use Bobby like this because he's wasn't able to be a full time announcer anymore. So, you know, this way I use him for a couple of years, a little longer than he'd had in reality. And then he quietly goes home, you know, anyway, on happier things. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, who's just, you know, he's just a road agent. Uh, Jack Evans, who's, you know, again, if we look at his popularity, basically you can see in August when they actually showed up on TV, like, you know, really over, in part because of the wild side and everything else. Uh, Noble. Noble, who I've, like, kind of pushed to be a mid-card guy just by having the, the cruiser title forever. If you look at his skills, like, he's actually really good in the ring. Um, he has good psychology, and he's, he's good in microphone. Like, the one problem I have with Noble is he's basically a slightly different version of Helm as far as, like, the arrogant, small, jackass, um, cruiserweight champion with a bodyguard. So I'm trying to find reasons, and one thing you'll probably find is, starting in the new year, I'm going to try to adjust Nitro. Like, because I think I, I really fell into a formula of Nitro, where it's basically, you know, opening promo... Five or six, you know, f five to six matches, you know, one main event match of 20 minutes, uh, semi minor of 15 minutes, shorter matches, you know, long segments. And I, I really felt that because, like, I was really playing to the game. And I really, like, again, I want to, like, have good ratings. Like, you know, that's why you play the game. But I also, like, want to really, like, build the characters. So I'm going to really try to do, like, different wacky stuff with people. A, to get more people on TV in a realistic way, and B, just because even though, like, I've really enjoyed booking this, I, I also kind of felt myself getting a skid near the end. Not necessarily even, like, that I was just liking what I was booking, because I still like the actual, like, where I ended up, but I sort of felt like I got into a rut. So, sort of, like, I've sort of going to try to force myself to do different wacky stuff as we go on. Anyway, so that's stuff you probably didn't really care about, but I just wanted to talk about it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Jason Jett, who... I started book weirdly because, like, he had his start of the year in, 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 in like, the Cruiserweights. Then he sort of got that, that like, he's part of, like, the main baby his team because they had to pull it fall roll. Then he got a ring tag team with Paul London, and that's all he's basically done. But he's not gotten quite over, like, mid-60s now. And he's good in the ring. Like, he'll never, he'll never be a top guy, but he can be in part of this, like, mid-card mix for a while. Um, Jerry Lawler. Lawler's interesting because I, I had a character for him, but it, I, I don't want to say it failed, but... I, like, I don't know. Like, like, 
the reason why I had him stop doing with AMW is like the AMW, like it never, I wouldn't like, I liked it as a decent idea, but it really never felt correct. Honestly. Um, I kind of have an idea of what to do with them. Um, but I don't want to plug them into like the, uh, Ross, like the TV, um, you know, doing, doing announcing, but yeah, interesting. Uh, Lawler, um, yeah, so she's currently in rehab for five more months, so hopefully she'll be happy when she comes back. And again, for those of you who don't know, this is still the most amazing thing, that Joni Lawler and Juvie are engaged. Okay, that's the most hilarious thing in the world to me. Um, Lance Storm is Lance Storm. You know, Bill, he's, he's Lance Storm. He stays in the middle. His team, I hope his team with Kidman does well. I have some plans for him, and along with Tron Brett. Uh, Mark Jindrak and Sean C. Asiak are basically the same people, or, you know, they're both mid-60s, high-60s, they're both solid in-ring hands, but the reason why O'Hare and Palumbo are top guys, and these guys are mid-card guys. I feel kind of bad about Jindrak, because I think he actually could be doing a little more, bit more, um, but, like, basically, like, my spots for, like, upper mid-card main event, new young star guys are kind of filled with O'Hare and Palumbo, so honestly, like, I might, like, this might be a case where I let Jindrak go in six months just because, like, the whole creative has nothing to do it for you. Uh, Paul London, you know, London's been the guy who I've sort of, like, I, I, I've sort of been shocked how, how like, I don't say how well I've pushed him, but just how consistently I've pushed him. Like, going from 35s to mid-60s, and skill-wise, like, you know, he'll never be a great guy on the mic, but he's decent. You know, he's really good in ring and stuff, you know? And again, if we look at uh, his top 25 matches, you know, he's had some bangers, you know? He had that fall brawl, which got 91, but, like, even if you look at it, it's like his match, like, he had a, that match versus Cash got an 80, and lots of other, like, really good matches, you know? Uh, Reno. Reno's interesting because I felt both him and Cash, I sort of, basically the thing is, like, again, and sort of, like, again, I know I've said this before, but actually booking like nearly what is it two and a half years of WCW at this point it really helped me felt you know for the whole like creative is nothing for you or when people like say oh why don't they put everybody on tv because like book like again obviously raw has three hours but smackdown only is two but things like you know basically if you think about it you know i have two hours to book i know basically 30 minutes is going to be taken up by basically setting up my main event Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, but regardless, like, you know, because you got to build up that main event. Then my semi-main, or my other, like, top main event, you know, angle plus matches, that's going to be, like, another 20 minutes. I, I want to have my, like, sort of, like, tertiary main event, like, uh, upper mid cards up sometimes. So that'll be another 10, 15 minutes. Then I want to do something with tag teams. I have a women's division. I have a cruiserweight division. So, like, very quickly, like, if you're not part, of, like, with tag teams, cruisers, and women, if you're not part of the title feuds, you very quickly have to, like, sort of have something really entertaining I like doing with you, or you quickly become, like, sort of, like, fodder. And that's the thing, is once, like, sort of, like, the back end of 2003, for me, was the three-way feud between the Heart Legacy, AMW, and Air Raid, like, unfortunately, I really didn't have much to do for this, with these guys. Like, if you look at their match history, um, Cash. Uh, Cash. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, if you notice, like, you know, Nitro, you know, they're consistently on Nitro, 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 and then, like, after Great American Bash, like, they defeat the Heart Legacy in June, in July. And, but then, you know, they're on the pre-show at Bash at the Beach. They're uh, part of a six-man, um, they're part of an eight-man, yeah. They're, they're part of a four-way match, the four-way tag at Clash of Champions, which is basically thrown together. Uh, then they have, like, sort of basically, then they're basically just, part, you know, basically Shane Helms, partners, part of random four ways to give other people wins um you know even havoc you know he's part he's 13 with gigantes to further the standard gigantes feud and then starcade they're of course part of the tight team gauntlet so one thing again like i, I sort of want to do is because like reno and cash because of their great chemistry are really good tag team and i really want to like push them back as a top heel team tag team but you know again we'll have to see and of course stacy hebler is um was gone for months doing tv roles but she's quite over she's a solid baby face um like she'll never be like a great like 
great on the mic, but, you know, she's Stacey Giebler, you know? Maybe in this role, she doesn't end up dating George Clooney for five years or whatever. Um, but yeah. Now we're moving down to our recognizable guys. Again, this is an insanely long video, so I wonder, like, I, I don't even know. Anyway. So we start out with uh, Angel Fox, a.k.a. Angel Williams, a.k.a. the future Angel of Love. Um, yeah, so she's showing from, like, you know, low 30s to mid 40s. Not the best, but also women's division, you know. She's charismatic, she's decent in the ring, and, you know, she's still likely our top women's baby face, at least for the time being. Uh, April Hunter is, of course, uh, Kidman's valet, and that's basically her job. Like, you know, she's decent charisma, terrible mic, you know. Not a not a worker at all, but you know what can you do? Orange a road agent, uh, Beth Phoenix. Phoenix is interesting because she consistently is not as good as I think she was. Um, anyway, pop wise, you know she's about the same when she was was when she started. You know, started the year. Uh, so remains a ref. Blitz is a like Blitz is sort of the perfect guy as far as like if you're not like if you don't. If you don't strike me as a character and, um, and like basically if you're not like sort of the top guy in one of those like, like, you know, part of a uh, permanent tag, you know, title contender in those divisions, sort of see what, what, what can happen. Um, cause yeah, you know, if you look like start of the year, you know, he's part of the cruise weight title pitcher. And then like after that, like he quickly becomes a job or a nitro and, or part of the pre show. Or, like, a permanent Saturday night, Saturday night guy, which is unfortunate. Like, he had that tech, he has that tag team with Yang, uh, which, let me see here, yeah. But it's not, like, he's basically a job for the Stars tag team, on, honestly. And the thing is, like, I don't feel that bad about not doing much else, because, like, he's solid in ring, but, like, he's not insanely good. So, yeah. Again, he's somebody who, like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with him long term. Uh, Cash already went, basically went over, you know, everything with him. He's actually salt, like, he's really good, like, as far as, like, uh, basics and everything else. He has decent charisma, like, he'll never be, like, a top, top guy. But, you know, again, his team with Reno was really good, so we'll have to see what I do with that. Uh, Sin Cartier, also known as Lufisto. Again, pop-wise, really, like, that win at, at Starcade was huge for, like, you know, honestly. And, like, he's decent in the ring. Like, you know, he has, you know, good sex appeal. Um, okay star quality. All I could, she's good in the ring, actually. So, you know, like, I, I don't feel that bad about giving her a wonderful title. Uh, Chavo, who, of course, did basically nothing for he was a permanent Saturday night guy. And now, because his brother, his nephew, uncle's around, he gets to be back on TV a lot. Uh, but yeah. I think he's, like, he's good in the ring. Like, he's, he's really good. He's actually, Better than you think in the ring. Like, if you look at his, like, actual stats, like, you know, 79 technical, 81 aerial, 85 flashiness, like, you know, uh, good basics, good psych, you know, honestly, I should, I should be pushing him stronger. I just forgot to, basically. Uh, Don Marie is basically sexy and a good manager for generic and Uh, dust, dust, okay, again, I talked about guys like Flair, Sting, etc. still being really good in the ring. Ironically, even though, like, he's still a decent worker, even now, like, 50, whatever. Like, he's really not anymore, so... Like, yeah. I mean, he's honestly a guy who I'm probably, like, you know, again, that's that six months, you know, that post brain and bash is going to be sort of a bloodletting and a changeover. Um, especially, like, you might see lots of people jobbing who you don't expect to be jobbing uh, for the last three months, like, you know, that April to June, like, you're going to figure out pretty quickly who I'm resetting and not reset. Like, he's not, he's still not, like, terrible, but unlike guys like Flair, Sting, etc., he did, he did, like, he doesn't have, like, that, like, that great row of stuff. Like, you know, like, for the mental scares, Flair has all 100s. And, like, Rhodes is still good, but, like, he's not great yet. Uh, same thing with Finley. Like, I'm thinking about doing the thing with Finley, like, where I basically, like, um, actually up his stats to, like, sort of simulate, like, his indie run. But also, I just might keep him around as, like, a guy. Uh, Gil Kim, again, another women's wrestler. If you also notice, like, I've sort of, like, changed the pitchers, pitchers, some people's pitchers to update. But yeah, up to 46. And the women are slowly getting over. Like, again, 
when I can only give him like 15 minutes total with angles and everything, it's, it's really tough to get him over. But she has a really good gimmick and she's quite good in the ring and she's, you know, charismatic and everything else. Unfortunately, she's kind of, kind of weird oh, in real life, but you know, what can you do? She's a wrestler. Uh, Jonathan Toro, also known as my really silly project I refuse to give up on. Again, uh, got him. He's actually not as much more over than you think he was, but basically I put him on Saturday night, put him over everybody. Uh, but Toro is somebody who you are going to see on Nitro a lot in 2004. Take that as you will. Because, like, again, again, this isn't coming from any, like, uh, any people who won the, uh, like, uh, the man predictions. This is just my personal fun of just wanting the world to put him over. Uh, Jordan Cole, also, again, Chrissy Vane. Uh, again, she's also getting a little more over as, as a woman. Like, you know, if you go here, 38s to 45s. And again, skill-wise, you know, she's not great, but, you know, dark quality, sex appeal, all that good stuff. Uh, Kaz. Kaz, like, I guarantee you, in this version of the world, on this version's internet, if there is one person who the internet message boards at the time are bitching like hell that I'm not pushing, it's Kaz. Because he's, like, he's, you know, he's actually, like, you know, if you look, look at his popularity, he's actually kept his popularity pretty decently. If you look at his skills, like, you know, he's really good in the ring, and he has a legendary gimmick, but I basically not used him, like, all this year. So, like, you know, Kaz, Alex Wright, Somebody else who we'll get to eventually. Those are the type of people who I really want to, like, I don't say, like, change over things, but really set things up so that, like, 2004 is a different year from them. Uh, Conan, remember the whole thing about Dustin Rhodes where I said, you know, people who I don't feel bad because they're not. But the thing, like, like Conan, I mean, honestly, I, I don't say I have nothing for Conan, but I've got nothing for Conan, okay? Like, I... It's not even like I hate, like, I'm one of, the, one of those people who thought, like, Conan is a horrible wrestler because I got, uh, you know, bored of him doing the same matches on Nitro in real life, even though I was watching at the time. But I just, like, he's, he's charismatic, he's microphone, like, I think there's a, maybe a fun thing I could do with him as sort of, like, bringing some lower, like, some other Lucha guys, but sort of the situation is, like, all the good Lucha guys are tied up in contracts with AAA or CMLL. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Luger, Okay. So this is interesting because I was going to let Luger like contract run out, but Bischoff basically signed like like I basically wasn't paying attention and Bischoff, Bischoff signed him to another contract. Thanks, Bischoff. Which I mean I don't feel that bad about, but like, you know, I'm not going to use him as a worker. Like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Luger's last WCW match was getting killed by Lex by Messias in January. Like he can hang out backstage with Sting all day long, but I'm not going to use him again. Like, I might have him show up as, like, for a, uh, Starcade Hall of Fame in induction, like, maybe at the end of this year, but that's about it. Uh, Lexi James, Lexi Slurry, Mickey James, all that fun stuff. Uh, popularity-wise, not quite as popular as you think. Like, you know, still high, you know, high 30s, low 40s. And skill-wise, you know, again, decent, all decent stuff. Um, but not quite as good as Gail Kim, which is why she's, that's, like, sort of interesting as both Kale and Lexi are sort of, like, they're sort of, like, fighting over to be, like, the, the top heel women's division, and, you know, sort of interesting. Uh, Mark Johnson is a, you know, ref. Mike Tanay is a, actually a good announcer, you know, better than you'd think. Uh, Monty Brown is, of course, one of, you know, he, you know, he debuted at Starcade, and he was already, like, I don't say, like, really over, but he was already decently over just because of his, like, indie run, including being NWA champion. And now, you know, obviously, he's, he's got a great gimmick. And if you look at that, he may receive a bonus when, when booked to look dominant. Um, I think you guys know what's going to happen for the next couple of months on TV. Uh, Skills-wise, you know, he's not bad in the ring, actually. Um, not that that's going to matter for a while. He has good charisma, good menace, really good star quality, so fun stuff. Uh, Nick Patrick is a ref. Ricky Steamboat is a, uh, oh, right. Steamboat is our, uh, is our developmental guy. So there we go. Scott Hudson, of course, uh, 
announcing. He has a 67 announcing, which isn't great, but, you know, still decent. Uh, Stevie Ray is interesting because, okay, again, a, a behind, you know, be behind the door again. Uh, so the actual idea f for the original idea for Starcade I had was basically Stevie Ray defeating Ernst Miller, and then I could book weirdo stuff on Saturday night, you know, off off screen, just have my own fun. But then Stevie Ray didn't want to work B shows anymore, so that's why I had to do the weird thing where uh, Monty Brown killed him, and yeah. Teddy Hart, who, if you, you know, Center of is like actually quite a bit less over than Jack Evans. Uh, but yeah, he had good matches, good aerial. Um,. He actually, like, okay, one thing that's actually interesting about Teddy is he has insanely high star quality. I, I don't even know where that's coming from. Like, I'd have to, like, pull up my TW 2016 or even, like, the original, uh, like, database to figure out what happened here. But, like, he actually has an insane star quality. Um, so, yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, Tony's Tony. Like, you know, this is a Tony who didn't get, like, obviously, you know, he's still Tony. But, like, he didn't get, like, like quite... Okay, let me rephrase that. He got burnt out, but then he got rebuilt. Uh, Tori Wilson, um, you know, was on TV. Decently over. Haven't really used her. Um, honestly, like, the problem with Tori is the stuff I, like, she's actually did surprisingly good out in, like, WWE and WWE is all, like, really wacky, crash TV stuff that I don't want to do. But, you know, at that point, like, you know, I could turn her heel, but like, you know, I, I don't know. It's just interesting to me. Um, also, she's not a wrestler or occasional wrestler, so there you go. Uh, Yang. Again, Yang's another guy like Blitz who's good in the ring, but nothing special. Um, uh, which is why he's where he is. Uh, then, okay. Tajiri is that other guy with, uh, Alex Wright and Kaz, who I should have pushed harder over the last year, but who just sort of got lost in the shuffle. Like, cause, you know, again, if you look at his skills, all really good stuff. So again. Now we're really getting into those stuff. Okay, so. Oh, no, okay, that's all, that's all these guys. Unimportant. So yeah. Okay, Amber O'Neill, who I'm actually shocked is this slow. Um, probably because she's just like, yeah, she has some chilly momentum. She hasn't had like, you know. Um, but, you know, she's solidly charismatic, uh, good star quality, is Matt Crash's manager, all that fun stuff. And again, like, if I didn't have, a, if I didn't have, like, uh, Mickey James or, uh, honestly, um, get him on the roster, she'd probably be, like, my top heel woman, because she's good in one of them. Uh, Disco is here. He exists. I have used, um, yeah, three times this year. One time to get squashed by Goldberg. One, one time in a wacky, uh, mix matches because in January, then again in June to get squashed by Toro. Like, you know, he's basically here, um, cause he had a really long contract to start out with. Uh, Ebony Sable, of course, is one of my new people I brought in from developmental. He's Juronix, really big guy, not actually popular yet, you know, you know, haven't really built him up on TV quite yet. Uh, if we look at his match history, let's see here. Yeah, like he showed up uh, in September, and I haven't been, you know, really building that much on TV yet. But he's basically been showing up in the background. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, Elizabeth Canales again, WCW, the home of two former, two future girlfriends of George Clooney. Um, again, like I enjoy having her on screen just as sort of Toro's, uh, you know, a Italian uh, sex pot, you know. But honestly. If I keep her around, I, I don't know. Like, I, if I keep her around, it'll probably be for another six months. Because I, I, like, I, I feel weird about, like, keeping her around forever. Because obviously, in real life, she would eventually go back to that. So, so that's the thing. Uh, hey, let's skip her. Uh, not super over yet, but he's good in ring. He has some charisma, some okay star quality. Um, and all I'm going to say is, he's probably going to have a better 2004 than you'd think. Emmy Sakura, who is just here to do jobs. Like, you know, she's a decent woman dresser who's here to do jobs. Uh, Ernest Miller, the former Saturday Night Commissioner, who I, I don't know. Like, again, he's he's another guy. I mean, he's somebody who's probably going to be re-signed by Bischoff because he's, he's Bischoff's good friend. Um, and, like, he's not terrible in the ring. 
but he's charismatic, but I don't know what to do with him. Uh, Courageous and Shannon Moore, honestly, are both guys who probably won't have jobs in six months. Like, or a year. Like, I really... Like, there's no reason to keep him around. Uh, Jeremy Barash, who's a, getting to be a decent announcer, you know. Um, Johnny Ace, of course, who is around as a uh, road agent. Laparka, who I re-signed, forgot, is not over at all. So, honestly, like, I signed him for basically a quick three-month thing. I probably will, like, like, I'll think about maybe keeping him around, but I'll, like, decide if I actually have something around to do with him. Uh, Lashford Leroux, who, again, he's been a job guy, you know? Uh, Mickey J. Ref, Mike Sanders, who I'm turning into a, uh, clear commentator just for reasons. Uh, Miss Jones is now a Monty Brown's manager. She's actually, like, decently charismatic, you know, has some star quality, and also just, you know, is around, so why not? Uh, Nikita Cult is the future, uh, Catering Waters, uh, Winter, and, like, really good, like, shockingly good in ring. Probably in part because she was wrestling weekly on, uh, for my developmental fed. Like, good charisma, good microphone, lots of acting, like, honestly, like, Gail and Nikki better watch out because she quickly might become, like, my top women's heel. Uh, Norman is Norman. Again, Norman's another guy who, in like at the end of this year, will probably not have a job anymore. As sad as it is, a Roman Norman Swinger are both like undercard guys who like made part of the Roman Legion, and of course who haven't like gotten that much more popular because they've only been on Saturday night. So there's somebody who like again, these guys, you know, the Roman Legion in general, and Toro and Swinger and Romeo are probably guys who I'm going to have to put on Nitro and sort of like bite the bullet as far as having slightly lower ratings for those things just to get them more over on TV. And of course Sabu, who is Sabu. Who, honestly, I'm probably not going to do, like, like, I, I don't know what, what, I, what else I'm, what, how much I'm going to do with him, honestly. Because he's Sabu, he's old, he's not that great in the ring, he's not even that much over, but I just wanted to use him as a name, so who knows. And Terry Taylor, who's Terry Taylor? And nobody did decide. So again, um, that's our whole entire roster, but we got one more thing. And of course, that is our developmental territories. All right, now it's time to look over our developmental roster, such as it is. Um, so basically, you know, as a quick little check here, um, you know, this is a mix of people who I've signed um, and who, um, what sort of looking for here? So yeah. Um, like I said, developmental, you know, is, I got two developmental territories, NW Wild Side, which I'll go over, like, their title history and everything else in a minute, and American Wrestling Queens, which is my women's developmental fed, which again, I'll go over those guys in a minute. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, and roster and overness and all that other fun stuff, but you know, but basically just, you know, starting things over. So, uh, we start with Adam Ortiz, who is one of the, uh, um, random, you know, one thing I like is the different world. So, you know, even like, you know, so, um, you know, so I have plenty of like extra pictures thanks to various, uh, databases. So, you know, basically when somebody comes up, usually what happens is either they get a blank picture or a picture of a retired wrestler. So I just go and fix that. Um, but outside of that, like, you know, I just let the, you know, game pull those people out. So we start out with, uh, Adam Ortiz, who's 20, debuted in August 2002. And, you know, he's okay. Um, you know, he's 6'2", 252 pounds, and is naturally a baby face. And if you look at his skills, so far, you know, he's a decent brawler, decent hardcore, um, mediocre, uh, charisma microphone, not a lot of star quality, but good basics. So, you know, probably never going to be a, like, honestly, he's probably never, he might not even get on the main roster. But, you know, he's going to be somebody out there in the world. Uh, next up we got Change Profit who is just a decent guy. Again, I'm not going to look at, like, overness because that stuff doesn't really matter. You know, he's decent in ring, but his star quality isn't great because the microphone isn't great. Like, if I bring him in, it's going to be basically as a change of pace for our funds, for our friends in Deadpool. Um, either as something new for them or something different or just something like that. Uh, Chris Rambola, 
who of course is uh, one of the guys brought in. So Ramal in real life uh, didn't get developed a contract in 2006 because like that's when WD basically found him. But you know he shows up in the game earlier, so I signed him. Um, again, in game, you know, actually decent stats so far. You know, as he built them up, uh, really good psychology, like shockingly good psychology. Uh, you know, decent start ball. Like he's somebody who I might actually bring up eventually. Like I'll probably redo, redo his full character and figure that out. But you know, he's somebody who I could actually possibly do something with in the long term. Uh, Jamie Tucker is a ref. Johnny Devine, of course, you know from TNA, Team Canada. He's a decent guy. You know, decent in ring, not great. Like start like. Decent star quality, never going to be a talker. Like, I can totally see him as part of the Cruiserweight division uh, sometime this year. Uh, Kai Graves is another uh, regen new guy. Again, trained by the power plant. Uh, Alaskan is 6'3", 271 pounds, a born baby face, despite looking like this. Adept, but he's adept at playing weirdos and oddballs, which is why I use this pitcher. Again, if we, if, if we look at his skills, good brawling, man everywhere else, okay psychology. Good psych, like good charisma, good microphone, really good star quality, okay menace, and everything else is also okay. So you know, uh, Keith Walker, who sort of just like you know, he's again he, in real life he came, became a decent long term zero one guy, and he's like okay, like he's strongly okay except for menace. So, but he's like not great in the ring. And he doesn't break star quality. So if I bring him up, it's going to be sort of a sinker swim thing. Uh Ken Anderson, who of course you know and love. Kennedy. Um like honestly, the main reason like he's not already up on the roster is I want him to build up his skills and to sort of like kind of build up his overness. Like I of course know that most of the overness building is going to be on TV, but I don't want to build up bring a nobody on TV, I guess. Um but yeah. Uh Kenzo Suzuki, of course. Uh, former New Japan guy, future with almost known as Hirohito. And here's the thing, is like he's actually decent in ring. Like he's okay in ring. He has some star quality. So he's somebody who I might actually bring in eventually. Uh Kill Switch and Wrathchild are both uh former uh independent guys who are both basically eh in ring. Like Kill Switch is actually a good brawler, uh and has some decent menace. But, like, Rathtrow actually has some really good menace. So, like, he's a guy, like, all these guys might show up eventually as part of, like, some redo of the Deadpool or restructuring or something else. And my smooth is, of course, Ice Train. Uh, and, you know, he's just, honestly, I'm just playing out his his his, his uh, contract. Marcus Militech is another guy who's a regen. Brawler, trans power plant, 6'3", pounds. Uh, again, whoops, yeah, I know. Skills wise, again, really good brawler. Uh, lots of menace. Okay acting, not the great star quality, but yeah, all that fun stuff. Marco Pony, of course, the feature Muhammad Hassan. Uh, I basically re signed him just because he was available. And yeah, that's about it. Prince Nana, of course, would be a future manager for Ring of Honor and other fun stuff. And, you know, he's actually pretty decent in the ring and charismatic. Honestly, I'll probably bring him up at some point this year. I just have to figure out the right way to bring him on, on, on screen. Uh, Ray Gordy, son of Terry Gordy, really good in the ring. Already used him once to show up on Starcade as more like the random guy from the elemental to appear in the cruiserweight match. Honestly, like, I might bring him up, like, long term as a, um, as like a part of the cruiserweight division as we sort of, like, rebuild that and re redo that. So, you know, who knows? Uh, Ray LePen, the future, uh, oh god, what was his name in WWE, N NXT, um, god, if you, if you look at him, you know who I'm talking about, uh, Leo Kruger, oh god, I totally blank on what his NXT name was, Adam Rose, Adam Rose, there we go, um, uh, and he's actually decent, like, good star quality, decent stuff in ring, fashionist, really good psychology, like, you know, really good heel, so he might show up, like, a, these guys are all like sort of in the long term like replacement in my mid card at the very least. A uh, Ricky who is again here is down here as a trainer. Uh the Ballards who honestly they're a thing. Like I don't know if they're going to retain. Uh Sterling James Keenan, who is already decently over, has some really good skills already, including microphone. 
honestly, like I brought him, uh, I gave him as a test uh, match on Saturday night. He really did good. So honestly, he'll probably be on TV soon enough. Tank Tolan is a guy. Again, he, his stats are actually pretty decent. Like, he actually pretty decent stats, just like these performance skills are crap. Uh, Tony Jones is a guy. He's actually, again, a decent in-ring guy, but he's nothing special, so he'll probably be, like, I don't know if he'll ever get on the WCW roster. Uh, Cuisina's a guy, again, decent high flyer, um, but with other guys who are better high flyers on the roster, I don't know, like, you know, he'll probably be a situation where I need more people to fill the cruiser division. Uh, Trevor Rhodes is probably going to be a guy who eventually gets on the roster because he's a really good brawler. He has some decent star quality. He, he's good menace. He can play the character as we've seen in real life. So, you know, he'll probably show up eventually. And so that's it for our male part. I'm probably going to, like, sign some new guys eventually. It just depends on uh, when, when I do that. So now we've got the women's side of the Dumbledore territory. So we've got Alice in Danger, of course, who is Steve Carino's sister, and who's really good in the ring, decent performance skills. Honestly, like, a lot of these women are basically in the spot where I don't want to bring up and do nothing with them. So they'll probably stay in the developmental until it's time to really do a full bore, like, you know, something really big with the women's division, our own version of the women's revolution. Uh, Annie Social is, again, Somebody who started out as um, in basically in naked women's wrestling um, again search the internet's. She's actually really solid in ring. Like you know, uh, Becky Bayless is Becky Bayless. Like you know, she actually is really like she has like a really good star quality, decent stats. Honestly, like she might be somebody who I bring in as something other than a wrestler, maybe eventually. Um, but you know, it just remains to be seen. Uh, Bonnie Maxson, who you might know better as Rain, if you're watching Shimmer. Uh, again, really good worker, good charisma, really decent star quality. You know, again, if I had spot for it, she'd probably be on TV. Uh, cheerleader Melissa, like, again, really good star quality, really good acting, good charisma, good in ring. Um, honestly, probably need to find a spot for her. Uh, Cindy Rogers. Okay stuff. She's somebody who needs some work. Uh, Kim Nielsen, who you probably better know as Desire. Oops, let me... Yeah, Desire. Uh, with Sunny Siaki's Valley for a bit. Okay in-ring stuff. Uh, getting need, need some more time. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Lacey. Lacey's actually really solid. Like, really good psych. Good technical. Like, eh, star quality. Eh, microphone acting. But, you know, not not bad. Uh, Madison Sinclair is somebody who I'm building up, or I'm building up double mental. Um, Lee Taka is, is the trainer. Miss Molly is just available, so just seeing if she, like, becomes something. Uh, Mischief is somebody who I have signed, and who is eventually going to be, like, something more, hopefully. She has high star quality and all that other fun stuff. Uh, Misty, of course you remember, uh, was originally Kidman's, you know, a sexy valet, but then they had bad chemistry in TW 2020, so she's down here learning how to work. I might eventually bring her up to be somebody's manager, maybe, because she has really good charisma and stuff, um, but like, I have to figure out the right spot for her. Uh, Natty Nightheart is somebody who goes up and down depending on when I meet her on TV. She's quite over, like, she's decent in the ring, you know, she's not, you know, she's not quite, like, stands out as a star, but she'll eventually be part of TV because the other hard, hard people on TVD. Uh, Nikki Rocks is Nikki Rocks. Perfectly good, like, solid wrestler. Actually, pretty good flashiness of psychology. Uh, will probably be built up to a star eventually. Uh, Ronnie Jonah is just a girl. Like, I mean, she's actually a really good in ring. Like, she actually has probably better stats than some most of the people on on the show. But, like, you know, Sexy Peel 76, Acting 75, but 50 only star quality. So, yeah, that fun stuff. Uh, Tracy Brooks, who I signed not that long ago, so she still needs to be built up. Uh, Vanessa Harding, same thing. Uh, Wasina Busek, who, like, again, if you look at her skills, she's, like, just stupidly good in ring so far, uh, especially for a woman at this point. But, and also really good star quality, but, like, I, you know, as you already seen on my roster, I already have one, like, European typical stalwart, 
So I don't know what else to do with her at the moment. So she just sort of stays in uh, developmental. Um, so yeah, that's it. Well, no, this is it for part one. Because again, part two is going to be the rest of the wrestling world. So WWE, the other companies, Japanese companies, going over who's available as far as like, you know, other in indie people, uh, going over all the generated rock characters that have been created to see what they're doing and other fun stuff like that. So, um, yeah. This has been a stupidly long video, so if you enjoyed this, give it a like, comment, comment below on anything that stands out to you or what you enjoy and not enjoying, and subscribe to me for lots of TW 2020 content like this, including this, my WCW 1993 series, my MLW 2005 series, and of course, this long-running series, which I will continue to do until basically people stop watching. But, you know, that's for now, so talk to you later, and adios. Have a good one.